Okay, so I'm going to start. Now, we did uh, tweening, which is basically going from one shape to another, and the computer automatically does that for you. And the example I'd used with that was... If you've got a star, like such, and you animate the number of points on that star, that's an example of the tween. So I'm going to click here for points, move over in time, and change my number of points. And that's a tween. Everyone familiar with tweens? That's when the computer automatically goes between the two shapes for you. Then, after we did tweens, we, yep, very good, Joe. All right, we moved to morphing with shape morphing. And what shape morphing was, was going where we had the path and we chose the first vertice. So if I wanted to go from like a letter C, I'm going to get rid of the fill. We'll go use only a stroke for this. Start that over. There we go. So what that one was, was we had the path for the shape right here. And we figured we do two different shapes that were somewhat similar. And you always want to make sure they line up somewhere so that they don't go drifting while you animate. And so if we had this shape here and then we wanted to go to, let's say, um, I'll just make it go from here, I'll hide this, well, no, let me copy that shape. We'll make another shape layer. Oh, hello, Danielle, no problem. All we did was I did a refresher on tweens and tweens are when you go from one shape to another and the computer does the math for you, like going, changing the number of sides to a star. And so I've got this one shape layer and then I'm going to, let's see, let's do a Z right here. And they're kind of similar, but not really similar. And you're noticing I'm paying attention to that point right there. So I'm going to want to try and drive the animation from right here. So what I did was I'm going to go right click on the point. I want them both to good evening to you, Eric, uh, that I want them to both start from set first vertex. And we well, saw how that changed. But uh, let's do this then. Okay. Now we'll try it. Hmm, it keeps switching around. Okay, well, I'll keep this shape then. And for the other one, because it's going to work with either way. Set the first vertex, and I'm just going to keep that one as well, just for the fun of it, to see what happens. All right, so what I do here, this is an example of a morph. I've got two different shapes. And this shape, I click the path, the path stopwatch, and I've got my keyframe. I'm gonna hide that. And then this second shape, I'm going to click the path stopwatch for that one. And that will give me a keyframe. So I'm gonna copy this keyframe from this layer and then hide it and then go back to my first shape, move forward in time and then 
paste that keyframe right here. And this is an example of a morph because we chose where we wanted the motion to start out of and we're being more deliberate about our approach, like trying to line things up so that it doesn't drift as it animates. So like aside from doing like shape layers and whatnot, you could make this look like a ribbon tying itself or something like that, or, you know, lots of different uses. Uh, and remember, your, I always keep a perfect keyframe at the beginning and at the end so that I can edit it any way I want in between. Like say right here, I want, oops, select that one point. If I want to move this a little bit and change it at that point in time, this keyframe is still going to be the way I want it to be. And if I wanted this to move a little differently at that point in time, it'll create a keyframe without changing that one until you get the motion that you want. That was our example of shape morphing. Any questions from that refresher? It's just, I got two different shapes and I copied their keyframes into the same shape layer. And I just changed them in between based upon how I wanted the motion to uh, change at those points in time. Like say I want this to go up a little bit and then come back down. That was using shape layers for morphing. Tonight, we're going to tackle something new. And we're going to be using mask layers for our morph tonight. <clears throat> so what we're going to do with this, it's the same thing I showed you before, where we're going from one shape to another. But it's a lot more powerful in that I can keep the shape of the object and then swap out the contents on the inside so I can turn this tomato into a bottle of ketchup or vice versa or like an apple into a thing of apple juice we're going to be morphing shapes and also the image inside the shape and to do that we're going to be using masks and I'm going to scale both of these down real fast I select them both and I hit scale and you want them set to fit. Okay. Now again, with the concept of morphing, I have these relative to each other, uh, in size there. I already sized them properly in Photoshop. So if I need to scale them or move them around, they stay true to each other. They're uh, proportional. Okay. That's the first thing. You got to make sure that when you bring them in, they're proportional and then your morph will move a lot smoother. Now I'm going to hide this tomato and just do the bottle of ketchup. Okay. And I'm going to leave the opacity off. Now, a quick reminder for masks to make a mask, you have to have the layer selected and then you could use any shape or the pen to create your mask. So if I put a star shaped mask over this ketchup bottle, like such, we now have a star shaped mask and you can see the opacity around it. And when you have a mask, remember anything with the stopwatch can be animated. You can animate the shape of that mask. You can animate its feather, the opacity, you can expand or contracts so this would be expanding that's contracting a lot of possibilities masks are very powerful and with the mask feather just a reminder when you apply the mask feather it will apply the mask feather evenly to every side of your mask Let me delete that now that was your basic shape layer. That's one thing with masks. So if you use your pen tool, I'm going to show you something right here. I'm just going to quickly make a little shape here. 
Okay, so this is still a mask, but if I were to just use mask feather here, it's going to feather in every side uniformly. And that's something that we don't want sometimes, like if you're compositing. So the way around that, we've drawn our mask with the pen tool. It has to be the pen tool. If you twirl down here, you'll have the mask feather tool. And what this is good for is you can select points along an edge. Like I'll pick right here and there. And when you drag out, you can then, you gotta be on the path when you're doing it, feather as much or as little as you want at whatever part of the mask. I'm just going to add some points to keep the sharpness around there. So let me zoom in. And remember this button right here hides your masks and sometimes your pads. So we've got a sharp edge here feathered going back to sharp around and then feathered again where I want it. This is how you can composite and do some good visual effects and tie some things in with your motion. If you need that type of control, use the mask feather tool. And like I said, first you have to draw your shape layer with the pen, then you add your points. And remember to put points where you don't need them to show which parts you want to keep a nice, clean, crisp line. Any questions on that refresher with masks before I move into morphing with masks? And we move this here. And one last thing, masks as well as being pads, you can animate the shape of them over time. Oh, I got to turn back on my path. And when you're animating path, you can not only animate the anchor points like I just did there by moving them, but you can also animate the Bezier curve handles as well as animating anything else with the stopwatch. Everyone's good with that. Before we move into the more complex, Okay, so again, make sure your shapes are lined up, which we have, and they're proportional to each other, which we've got. And we're going to think about what we want to do. I want this tomato to turn into the bottle of ketchup. So I'm going to show you the easy one first. Oh, that's the tomato. That's the hard one. If you're following along. Click on the bottle of ketchup. And then what you're going to do We're going to go to auto trace. And I forgot which week these slides are, so I'm going off of memory. So you select the layer you want and you choose auto trace. And what we're going to want is we're going to want the alpha and we do not want to apply this to a new layer. We're going to keep it on this layer. And you can see it automatically created this mask path around the um, bottle of ketchup. And I'm going to rename this path. I'm going to call it tomato, I mean ketchup. Like such. Any questions on that first step? Just select the layer, choose layer, auto trace, 
and After Effects will automatically draw a mask path around it. Okay, we're good up to there. We're gonna do the same thing with the tomato, but the tomato is a little bit more complex because of all these leaves. So we gotta be more careful. It's gonna make multiple masks. And just like when we're doing the shapes, we're gonna want one mask for this. So we're going from one shape to the next. So we're going to delete the extra masks. So again, I select, choose layer auto trace, and then hit OK. And you can see I have three mask paths. I think this is the inner space there, so I'm going to delete that path. And this is that negative space in there. And when you're uncertain, you can always click this color here. Click that color and you can make it any color you want. I'm going to make it uh, bright yellow. And then when I select it, see there is right there bright yellow. So that's how you change the color of your masks. Like if I want this blue one to be uh, Let's just say a darker blue. Now it's a darker blue. And I'm going to rename this mask tomato. And I probably misspelled it, but I don't care. So I've got two layers and two masks. Everyone with me so far? Okay. I'm going to paste the tomato mask into the ketchup mask. I mean into the ketchup layer. So I select the mask and hit copy. And then I select my layer and hit paste. And now I've got two masks. And then I'm going to do the opposite for the ketchup. I mean the tomato, I'm going to paste the ketchup in there. And you can see each layer has both shapes in it. I mean both masks. So I'm going to hide my tomato and go to my ketchup. I think the effect's called reshape. Let's find out. I think it is. Okay, good. I was right. Okay, so our destination mask. We want to end up at the ketchup. I think we're going to start off on the tomato. And let me change this elasticity to liquid and the interpolation to linear. Because I'm going to want this morph to be consistent, like an even pace. I don't want some goofy speeding up or slowing down. And let's change this percentage and see what happens. Yep, it's starting to work. All right, so if we're, let's switch those around. Yep. Okay, yeah, because our source layer, we're on the ketchup, so we have to make that the source layer. All right, let me set this back to zero. Now for here, I believe the way this is gonna go is this. I 
the ketchup. Mask. We'll try add. And then the tomato will try none. And that looks like it's working. Cranked up to 100%. Yep, okay. So, what those two mean add, that means, now he's it saying, hey, add what's inside here, but it's saying, take this image. And then for tomato, none, we're just treating that as a shape. So what we did was we took the size and the shape of the object, and we changed the way the contents inside fit. So let me show you how that's going to work. These points right here are correspondence points. And what you're going to want to do is find similar points on the shapes. So I'm going to want to go from like a curve to a curve. And see how my mouse changed. Right here it's an arrow, but then I've got the arrow with the circle. That means I've grabbed the correspondence point and I can move it then. Otherwise, I'm going to change the shape of the mask path, and that's not what I want. You want to wait for that circle to pop up? So you wait for that circle to pop up, and then you can move it. Like that. And to add a correspondence point, I think it's... Here... I'm going to hold down Alt and click. Let me make sure my effect is selected. Yep. You have to click on the path, not a path point, the path. Hold down Alt or Option and click, and then you create a correspondence point. And then there's my arrow, and I'm going to move that. So you set however many you want, and I'm just going to do this with two, just so that we don't eat up too much time with it. So I've got my correspondence points. Remember, you got to wait for the mouse to change to that little circle next to it. That means you can move the correspondence point. And to add more, you want to be in the path lines, not the anchor points, but in the path, and you alt or option click. And that's how you create a new one. So I'm saying this shape, try to morph to there. And... I'm going to click my percentage to animate it. And let's just say it's a four second morph. I'll do three seconds. And I'm gonna drop my render quality so it goes faster. And you can see we now have the shape of the tomato with the image of the ketchup bottle inside it. So let's render that and see how that looks. And remember, morphs work best in two instances when it makes sense, like the tomato bottle and the tomato and apple and apple juice, stuff like that. That makes sense thematically. And if you're going 
to similar shapes, it'll be uh, much more successful. Like if you go from a dog to a cat, they both have four legs. They both have, you know, pointy ears sometimes, and they both have tails. You're not going from like a dog to an octopus, which has, you know, eight tentacles. And that's why when you see in, in videos, when people do a morph like this, if it's going from like a human to like a wolf or something like that, the person will crouch down onto all fours so that you're going from the shape of something on all fours into another shape that's on all fours. So hopefully that makes sense. Any questions on the first part? Okay, no questions. All right, now, if you say this is perfect and you like the way it looks, what you can do is copy the effect and it's gonna keep your correspondence points when you copy and paste it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this effect onto the tomato and change it around. So for here, it's the ketchup going to the tomato and on the tomato, it's the tomato going to ketchup. It already changed that for us. Let's see if it kept the keyframes too. And the keyframes, see it's where I moved the playhead because I was, I wasn't paying attention. There we go, now the keyframes line up. And what's gonna happen is now the tomato is gonna morph into the shape of the ketchup bottle. And the best way to do this is to find a spot where they overlap and then blend them together with an opacity change. So, let me think. Put the ketchup on top. And I'll start to fade it out about here. And then you can just mess around with your keyframes until everything lines up. Uh, perfectly, but that's the concept. You've got your two shapes that you're just morphing between, well, I should say two masks. Right here, they're starting to look good. like such. Any questions on what we covered with masks? Okay, the meat and potatoes are there. Now we just gotta season it a bit. It's looking good. Um, okay, so. For that part there, linger on it a little less. Like right here, when this ends, See the difference there? Yeah, no problem. So do you see the difference with that zoom in? Like the all black fill 
having that up there for too long is just going to bore the viewer. So the second it hit the screen, I ended it and switched to instantly go out of the next shot. I love what you did with the uh, smoke there. Very nice. Oh, it's a still image. Interesting. See, now you got a little motion in there. Yeah, I see your, your thing. I broke it down. You see, now there's some life to it. Just with those two keyframes. All I did was um, turbulent displace. And I keyframed the evolution. I went from zero to like two full circles. So remember whenever you see these, the first number is absolute circles and the second number is um, specific degrees. I decided to go two full rotations on the evolution of that turbulent displace to give it some life. Now it's got some volume to it. I like the transition you did there with the gradient good use of that. Is that the um, light rays? Yep. Nice. Nice and subtle. Like I said, just find some elements to put in each shot to, I mean, aside from what you've got, like just to enhance it or um, increase the depth of the shot. Like, uh, clearly you're doing a romantic comedy here, right? Like that's your theme? That's uh, the roto brush. I can cover that um, Monday because we're going to be going into roto brushing and um, mocha. But see how quickly I got that quick mask to comp this up. You can add depth to the shot by putting things into it closer to what would be the fake camera and then watching your edges. So like I threw a blur on here to draw attention off it so that it's not the main focus. And then you could like animate it off. Uh, so this is... Right here's that, so let's try this. And remember, sometimes if things don't work, uh, pre-compose them to see if that makes it work better. That's what's doing it. It's the proximity of the effect. See that? Remember, the crosshair is a good way to move things. Well, I'm giving you this as an example because um, I had to, I wanted to add some interest to the shot 
and this is a way of getting that off before the transition. There's a million things you can do. Like I said, it's your chance to do what interests you and inspires you. And you got a lot of heat, a lot of good things to go here as a building blocks, but you need to go beyond like the Ken Burns effect. Like I said, even just putting this turbulent displace on that still image does a lot. And then, you know, figuring out what else you'll add to these and then where your text is going to be, how it's going to come in. That's another thing that's going to make this sing. So look at uh, credit sequences that inspire you. I gathered that one, Sam. <laughs> okay, so you've got an idea for your story, literally storyboard. Okay, so what genre is it going to be? Sci-fi, mystery, and are you going to be using um, characters? Are you going to be using images, video? Okay, good. Definitely try and draw out your ideas and get them to me as soon as possible. Like, you know, even if you're just using lab time to draw it out so I can get an idea of how the uh, thing is going to play out. I'd appreciate that. A dice sequence. So what is a dice sequence? I know, but there's going to be more motion than dice rolling, correct? And I'm just grabbing these so you can visually see what's what. Okay, good. Yep. So here I've got so this is my son practicing for band. I'll parent him instead, make my life easier. All right, yep, so I'm going to 3D enable all these. And for this one,
if you set your corner points, make uh, whatever you parent to the die, like what I did, uh, I used alpha mat. So I just grabbed a square shape and I found an image. I used my square shape as the alpha mat for that. And then I texture, parented the texture to the um, shape layer. One second. And then I just, since they're 3D, you can rotate them on the X, Y, and Z axis. And what you have to watch out for here is I've got this texture parented to that shape, this texture parented to that shape. And you've got to make sure that your shapes are all parented together. So that as it rolls, it rolls together. Okay. That's the final step. And then you'll have your dice. So, you know, like I said, you could put anything on your dice you want. And the beauty is, before I hop over to Theo's thing, once you're working with this two and a half D environment, you could also add lights. And that will respond with your dice as they move through 3D space. See that? Add a little bit more interest to them. Okay. No, no, I love it. It's very strong. Good idea. And then you could do some uh, fun things with... Um, remember I showed you the fill effect and toggle hold frames and how you can instantly change things? Like if you change the color of like the background and the shapes like instantly... Uh, you'll get a nice fun effect or you could even do some like textures like stripes and polka dots and just a nice fun playful thing um, and have them switch out very quickly um, with hold frames. And just a quick reminder of what that would look like. Here's here. Throw on a fill effect. Click color. Hit the U key to pull up my keyframes. Right click on it and choose toggle hold keyframe. And then I go forward in time. And I change the color. And you see here it's a hard cut. There's no transition. Yeah, great. So you could do that with color, you could do it with textures. Um, and you know what? I'll like, let me get rid of this effect. So that's how you do it with a fill effect. And if you want to do it with images, let's say we want to go from here to the image below it. All you have to do is just change the endpoint so it's a hard cut from one image to the next. Like that. So it's just changing where your layers begin and end to do it with textures or images. And it should be very fun and interesting. Okay, so, oh, you can hear that? Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm not sorry. <laughs> okay, so let me, eh, I'm, let me mute it this time. I played that song at my wedding, so you hurt my feelings there. Okay, so what I would suggest doing 
to push this a little bit because what you got so far is good. If you put, let me try and get it with the bullets coming out. There we go. If you put some muzzle flash here, and if you have a character holding this and the muzzle flash lighting up a bit of the side of the person, like a side lighting. And in that side lighting, you have a similar texture to this for that character. That'll be really slick. And I, I think that'll really uh, help push it more than just the gun there shooting. Um, I think someone holding it and those moving out uh, faster. And like I said, with the muzzle flash, you might not even need to see those. I think the muzzle flash would be enough. And uh, maybe, like I said, having that side light showing some of the character with that texture on there would be pretty good. I like what you did with the run and the red. But I don't know if you should bring the letters back up like that. Um, what about this? All right, can you see my mouse on the screen as well as the video or no? No, you can't. Oh, wait, wait, maybe you can. Yeah, okay. Okay, you can see that then. All right, the R, what I would do is I'd have that R solid and do a gunshot there to make the hole and maybe one in each of these letters and then that's what turns them red the impact of the the shot and you keep the other letters up i think that'll make more sense than having the letters drop off and then come back on and then plus you know you're impacting the letters as well maybe with those shots you have a little bit of a, a wiggle um parented to a slider for that impact and then end it to have some more deliberate shake from the impact. Now, do you need a refresher on parenting a wiggle effect to a slider control? I'm going to do it real fast right here because it's literally going to take me two minutes. Okay. Oh, Forerunner. Okay. Well, too late. I already reinvented this. All right. So if we did position, option click on the stopwatch and type in our expression, wiggle. And then I could just double click there to fill it out. And let's just to randomly throw out some numbers. I'll do two comma 300 and then click out of it. Now when I hit the spacebar to preview it, that's way too much. Uh, let's try one and then 100, click out of it and then hit the spacebar. All right, that's a little better. It's, it's a bit much, but you know, it doesn't need to move that much. So here's what we do. You put in a null. You can get there by going layer, new, null. And I'm going to call this null um, slider. That's an optional step, but it helps me remember why I'm putting it there. And here's the slider control. I put that effect on my null layer. Twirl down my arrows. Select that. Pick whip it up to the slider. And now we'll test that out. So zero is off, one is on. So I go forward a few frames, click on, there we go. Now it's working. And then for however long I want it to be active, then I add another keyframe by clicking my empty diamond over here. So this keyframe is the exact as that one. So it's zero, one, one. And I move to where I want to stop, add another keyframe, and I change it to zero. So now it's going zero, one, one, zero. Select them all. Come on. Right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. Now let's take a look at that.
and that's how you get your wiggle parented to a slider to have it wiggle when you want like I said when the bullets shoot so this is a bit severe you I did like one 100 you don't need to do that much but now you can watch this when I have it up tomorrow and have a reminder of how to do that Okay, don't worry about Jacqueline. Uh, just take some time, try and get it to me before the weekend. Um, you've got your idea, I just need to see some visual samples. Like even if you could send me links to things that inspired you so I sort of see what you're visually going for. And I hope your kids have a good night's sleep and stay safe and have a great weekend.
when the other characters drop in after the angry fist are they attackers are they teammates like what's their relation to the main character okay well here's what i'm going to propose all right now they're superheroes right or are they sci-fi people which one is it okay so you've got two options one some of them or one of them it's all up to you can drop down okay one of them can drop down from the top of the screen and do that like you know hero landing and then stand up and you know so that'll look good and it's not gonna be too labor intensive and then for some of the other ones you can do an effect to bring them in you know like um like a smoke plume apparator death eater type thing um a lightning bolt fire things like that and then have them appear after that effect flashes off so there's several ways you can do this or even fancy transitions or something like that um if they teleport in or whatever there's a billion ways to teleport or bring in a character so you've got a lot of play there and any suggestions you have uh let me know and i'll help you break them down during lab you know for the remainder of the school year i do not recommend flashing them out what i recommend is this if you've got let's say one two let's pretend there's five of them so some too lazy to count your stick figures there's five of them and you're showing them from head to toe that's a wide shot you would i would suggest to give the shot some depth is don't have them lining straight up like have some land below i'm like behind maybe one or two off to the front um more towards the side but have them spread out and then do a camera zoom in um on the character like the uh, main character and then we'll have to figure out the uh the how to go from that close up to uh maybe you could show like the zoom in on the character and then uh go to um maybe because you don't want to do too much spinning around that's gonna be a lot of animating um maybe you could do uh the opposite of that zoom out and see the villain's foot come into the frame so it's like a really long distance between them and then go from like a cut between a close up of the hero and then showing the villain or something like that there's a couple ways to do it but you got to figure out the way that you want to uh make this work but most of the parts are there well i hope that helps and like i said i'll help you break down different ways of having people enter in and whatnot that's fun and shows a bunch of different animation techniques now like i said my main concern don't rely heavily on video you got to have a lot of motion you can do like special transitions uh alpha matting things in um things like that but you know just putting type over a video isn't motion graphics show me something like a reference of what you want to do that'll help but i've got a basic flow for what you want to do 